that now. <laughs> All right, so um, yesterday I talked a little bit about uh, what was happening on 9-10-2019, and today is 9-11-2011. I mean, 2019, oh, hello. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it actually marks, um, from here until the end of the year, it actually marks 111 days so that's kind of auspicious and you won't see that again until 21 10 I think or something like that so um, whenever you see 111 I I don't know if you follow me as often on the um, uh, stories but I always kind of if I catch 111 or 1111 I tend to kind of post it and share it and remind you to like make a wish because those are like the monumental times to um, connect to because it's like if you're into it or not into it or potentially like understand some kind of understanding of quantum physics and the possibility that we move through different realms through our own astral projection um, that these are kind of you know archangel deliverance of messages reminding you that you're on the right path or reminding you to remember yourself you know feel your feet on the ground feel the breath coming in and out of your body feel the circulation of you know your blood running through your veins and kind of aligning you to gratitude and once you're aligned with gratitude it's monumental the the the, the way that you can recalibrate your energy and that puts you in a frequency in a vibratory frequency that is really connected to source really connected to your truth to your sat nam however you can relate to that and then kind of everything everything always almost opens up to clarity and more grace which you can prove it wrong if you want just by testing out the feeling of feeling grateful and there's you know you cannot say oh I don't know what to be grateful for I mean you can ask that but that's not an empowering question because you're almost you're almost giving your power away and and you want to kind of ask yourself empowering questions so that you can again align yourself into that more vibrant frequency which is your true nature right so if you are asking yourself, oh, I don't know what to be grateful for, be grateful for that moment of being, you know, innocent, <laughs> of seeing your innocence, you know, and some people will call it your ignorance, but you know, well, we'll look at the higher, the higher perspective of that, the higher polarity of that. So yeah, tapping into your innocence and finding the gratitude in that. For me as a mother, I kind of find it overwhelming and, um, and then I'm reminded that, oh, I should actually be grateful for this moment because I'm only going to experience this once. You know, I can't go back in time and be with Soleil when she's two again, even though these are the most challenging moments for us between her and I and introducing to her, you know, her sibling, her new baby brother. It's been a very trying moment for us. Yet at the same time, I'm realizing it's not going to last. And I'm grateful for these experiences and I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to choose you know yesterday I was talking about those mental loops right that we get trapped in three things to recognize is to see the mental loop right to forgive yourself if that mental loop is self-sabotaging and then to choose <laughs> to choose that you're not gonna act on that thought to choose that you're going to go in the trajectory in the trajectory that's in alignment with you know the you that you want to be you know the you that you see yourself being which is divine right which is in alignment to source which is in alignment to your true nature and then acting accordingly <laughs> so you see that you forgive yourself you choose and you carry on in choosing the higher aspect of yourself so with this being, you know, this beautiful, you know, numerological, um, numerological number that we're experiencing right now, use it to 
you know, be the catalyst to catapult you forward, to move you through time and space in the direction that you want to be speaking more from and be acting more from and be kind of vibrating in that way that is going to not only elevate you, but elevate the people that you come into contact with, right? Because you, like I mentioned yesterday, your aura introduces you before you even say a word. <laughs> so you're already teaching the moment that you step into a space. You're already like, you know, teaching yourself sovereignty, you know, respect, you know, and how you carry yourself is how people will carry you, you know? And um, so we were doing Subha Kriya. We've been, we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing Subha Kriya for the next, next 18 days. And I kind of proposed that to, to you as well, if you want to see what, what changes and what um, recalibrates in your system, not only in, in your energetic body, but in the energetic body that's, that are affected by you. So as women, we are the householder yogis and not even as women, men as well. And so however your aura is, um, is building itself up and if it's in a vibration that again is, is of higher vibration, then it starts to affect the environment that you're in. It starts to affect your home, it starts to affect your workspace, it starts to affect your creative space, it starts to affect your, you know, all your relationships, whether it be a romantic friendship or business. So it's nice to kind of have that opportunity to try it out for these next few days and test it and see if it's something that works and something that might not work. So this Kriya, yes, it strengthens the aura and it also really resets the arc line. So your arc line is kind of where you keep a lot of your karmic records, where you keep a lot of, where basically where your Akashic records reside. And it goes from earlobe to earlobe, like a halo. And and then for women, it's kind of, you got like a double time, because it also goes nipple to nipple. And um, with that said, your arc line also is kind of, it holds all these karmic imprints of not only your current incarnation, but the seven incarnations before you, and can also lead the trajectory of the seven incarnations in front of you. So depending on how you wanna play the game, how you wanna play this, <laughs> this life of how much you wanna liberate your ancestral chain before you, and how much you wanna kind of set a clean slate for the generation that is to come. You know, and for me, I've been working a lot with clearing that, clearing that slate, liberating a lot of, um, a lot of the trauma. And, um, and so when we go into, when we go into this mudra, I'm going to scoot this back a bit so you can kind of get the hands. We will do it together this time. I'm timing myself. So when you put the hands, I'm going to do a little bit more scoot a bush. Um, when you put the hands here, you're really just windshield wiping, you know, the traumas, you know, the triumphs. You're windshield wiping all of that stuff out and, and at the same time simultaneously dumping out the subconscious mind because the movement is not only weighing heavy on the shoulders, but is also testing your um, commitment. Right? And that's what the arc line is. If you find yourself telling yourself that you're going to do this for such and such time, for such and such days, and you don't do it, that's kind of a reflection of a weak arc line, right? Because you're not, you don't trust yourself. So you're already kind of like setting yourself up to just not do the thing because it's weak. And it's not on purpose, it's just we're not designed to work on the arc line. <laughs> it's not something that you can buy at like the grocery store, you know, how to strengthen the arc line. This is something you get in these teachings, which is pretty beautiful and pretty profound. And, you know, Yogi Bhajan delivered these with no, just for us to get stronger and to be able to handle this time that we're in and the times to come. So it's kind of a sweet gift to have and they're free. You can access them online, you can access them on the library, libraryofteachings.com, you just put in a thing, whatever you want to 
you know, work with and it'll spit you out a Kriya. So it's pretty fabulous that it's all available to you. So um, we're going to do it together. And I want you to kind of, for this one yesterday, was to just clear out, forgive, let go, dump it out. This time you're like calling in whatever is it that you want to magnetically obtain, what you want to attract, what you want to feel more of. You know, Danielle Laporte talks about, you know, your core desired feelings. How do you want to feel versus what do you want, you know? So what, what is a feeling that you want to um, feel? And what are the experiences that you want to experience? You know, for my family, it's been joy. It's been joy from the beginning of time. <laughs> so I just want to feel joy. I want to feel joy and I want to feel just happy. So that's kind of been ours. <laughs> and you're more than welcome to just, while you're in this, just embody that and see how that feels. And then see how that feels in your, in your connections with others. Okay, so we're gonna do it together. It might time out, but, um, but it's okay. So <laughs> I did it yesterday right after I posted the video and um, I didn't do my camera on fast forward, on like the fast forward loop. So it's on regular time and it's too long to share. So it's only a 15 minute uh, meditation. So we're gonna do it together. I'm gonna share with you the sound current too. It's, um, it's called Suba Kriya and it's by Akal Star. And you can access it on YouTube and you can get it and I'll basically play, you can, you'll experience it here with me. You play the first, you know, you play the song and then the first three minutes it'll give you a ding and then you move into the next um step of the kriya and then three minutes and you hear another ding and then you move into the next and then ding and then it keeps going which is kind of really um practical and easy it's all delivered to you it's not complicated at all you don't need anything <laughs> okay so let's do it let's let's do this okay i'm gonna play it right away i'm just gonna get into it oh and with the hud Make sure that you're pumping the navel with every har, and you want to do the har, so you want to do that double R. For people who speak, you know, romance languages, it's going to come easy. For those of us that don't, really work with the har. You want to really hit the roof of the mouth and really stimulate that upper palate so you get a nice secretion of the, of the hypothalamus, okay, and so that the things can reset. Okay, enough talking. Let's get into it. Har, 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 har. Hi, 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 hi,
God, 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 God,
long time sunshine upon you and the all light surrounds you and pure light within you guides your way on. I said all light surrounds you on purpose. Okay. Satnam and maybe take a little shavasana and rest a bit so that you can just relax. And um, I want to hear how it goes. Okay. Um, tomorrow I'll share a little bit on what's happening on the 9-12. <laughs>